This lesson is about series and parallel circuits. There are two basic ways to connect multiple components of a circuit. They can be connected in series, which means that there's one path for electrons to flow. Electrons will travel through every component. The other way we could connect multiple components is in parallel. This means that there are multiple paths for electrons. Electrons only travel through one component or another. Let's begin with series circuits and discuss potential difference or voltage. Electrons now are going to be passing through multiple components. The electrons gain electric potential from the battery. This is just like a chairlift, which gives skiers gravitational potential energy. Electrons are going to lose electric potential through or across each component. This is like skiing down each section of a trail. You'll lose some gravitational potential energy on each section. This means that the sum of the potential differences at each component should be equal to the potential difference of the battery. For series circuits, V equals V1 plus V2 plus V3. Now let's look at current. The electron flow, the current, originates at the battery. Since there's only one path, all the electrons have to flow through all of the components. If a hundred electrons come out of the battery, then all 100 electrons travel through the first resistor, and then all 100 travel through the second resistor, and then all 100 travel through the third resistor. The current in a series circuit is the same through each component. Finally, let's talk about resistance for series circuits. Since each electron has to travel through every component of a circuit, as more components are added, the overall resistance of the circuit would increase. This is also known as equivalent resistance. The equivalent resistance in a series circuit is simply the sum of the individual resistances. Now let's take a look at parallel circuits. We'll start with potential difference or voltage. Once again, electrons gain electric potential from the battery. But this time, electrons are only passing through one component. Therefore, they have to lose all their electric potential through that single component. If you and two friends are going snowboarding, you gain the same amount of gravitational potential energy as you go up the chairlift. And even if one of you takes a beginner trail, and one of you takes an intermediate trail, and one of you takes an expert trail to the bottom, you'll all lose that same amount of gravitational potential energy. In a parallel circuit, the potential difference across each component is the same. Now let's take a look at current. Once again, the current originates from the battery. Each electron is only going to pass through one component or another, so some of the total current passes through each of the components. This means that the current originating from the battery is equal to the sum of the individual currents. Finally, let's talk about resistance in a parallel circuit. When more components are added in parallel, the electrons have more possible paths to follow. This is like opening up more lanes on a highway. This reduces the overall or equivalent resistance. It's not easy to write an equation that shows the sum getting smaller as you add more numbers. This means that the equation for equivalent resistance in a parallel circuit is a little bit complicated. The reciprocal of the equivalent resistance is equal to the sum of the reciprocals of the individual resistances. Let's take a look at an example of a resistance calculation. I want to point out a common mistake that people make so that you don't make it. 
What is the equivalent resistance of a parallel circuit with three resistors, 4 ohms, 6 ohms, and 10 ohms? Well, we can start with our equation for equivalent resistance in a parallel circuit, and we can plug in our 4, 6, and 10 ohms. If we do the addition on the right, we can find that the reciprocal of the equivalent resistance is 0.52. This is not the answer. The question doesn't ask for the reciprocal of the equivalent resistance. We want to know the equivalent resistance. You could use the reciprocal button on your calculator that looks like a 1 divided by x, or you could put the 0.52 over 1 and cross multiply and divide. Either way, you'll find that the equivalent resistance is 1.94 ohms. Please make sure that you do this last step if you're trying to solve for the equivalent resistance of a parallel circuit. Here's another example for you to try. What is the equivalent resistance of a parallel circuit with three resistors, 12 ohms, 20 ohms, and 32 ohms? Now that we know the equations for series and parallel circuits, we can use them to calculate the voltage, current, and resistance of circuits and components of circuits. To help us do this, we're going to use the magic table. Okay, it's not magic, obviously, but it's incredibly helpful. I'm going to explain how to use it, and I think that you'll find that it's a great way to organize your information and it can help you figure out which equations to use. First, let's describe the table. There's a column for each quantity, voltage, current, and resistance. I've written them in this order because V equals IR. There's a row for each component of the circuit. If there's three resistors, you have rows one, two, and three. If there's two light bulbs, you just have rows one and two. If there's four electric motors, you have rows one, two, three, and four. Finally, there's a row for the circuit as a whole. Let's take a look at an example and go over the directions for how to use the table. So here's a parallel circuit with a 12 volt source of potential and three resistors, 2 ohms, 4 ohms, and 6 ohms. I want us to figure out the total current of the circuit and the current through each resistor. So first of all, draw a table. Next, we fill in our givens. The next step might seem trivial, but it's actually pretty important. Identify the type of circuit that we're dealing with. This is clearly a parallel circuit. I suggest covering the series circuit equations on your reference table with your calculator so you don't even see them. Finally, we'll use appropriate circuit equations to fill out the columns and rows. Since this is a parallel circuit, we should know that the potential difference across each resistor is the same as the potential difference of the source. All of the V's are 12. Now we can use Ohm's law across each row to figure out the current. I times R has to equal V. So 6 times 2 equals 12, 3 times 4 equals 12, and 2 times 6 equals 12. We've now found the current through each of the resistors, and if we simply add those up, we can find the total current in the circuit. Notice we were not asked to find the equivalent resistance of the circuit. If we wanted to, we could find it one of two ways. We could say that R equals V divided by I and do 12 divided by 11, or we could use the equivalent resistance equation for a parallel circuit and use the 2, 4, and 6 ohms. Either way, we would find that the equivalent resistance of the circuit is 1.09 ohms. Here's another example. You try this one. What is the total current in the circuit and what is the potential difference, or voltage, across each resistor? Hint, use the table. 